What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T. Claus. My name is Teddy, and this is a channel dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the random clips. So, being a growth investor in this type of environment is definitely not for the faint of hearts. And my question to you is Did you survive the week, or did you throw your hands in the air and said, Enough is enough? On the equity side of the world, the week was marked by renewed inflation fears as a result of the CPI number coming in higher than expected. And if you remember, inflation is kryptonite to growth stocks, so it makes sense that they, they would go down. On the crypto side of the world, it was the reignited debate around Bitcoin and its energy consumption as a result of Tesla and Elon Musk announcing that they were going to pause on accepting further payments in Bitcoin for their cars. But not just that, it was also the fact that Elon publicly announced that he has been working and for quite some time now with Dogecoin devs to improve the code behind Dogecoin. And so that sent the whole cryptosphere into a frenzy and you have people on the Bitcoin side not liking the idea. Uh, and that's primarily because Bitcoin dropped significantly post the announcement, right? Now, it's not just because of Elon, and there's a lot more reasons behind it, but that's what a lot of people are attributing the drop to. So we can go into a crazy debate on that, but I'm just gonna stay out of it. And I will just say this, you clicking the buy and sell button is strictly your decision. And you can't blame somebody else for their opinion on one coin versus another. If you click sell, that's on you. And that's really where I'm going to leave that one. The other important event that took place this week was the earning call from Virgin Galactic for their Q1 2021. And so the focus of this video is going to be on my thoughts on the macro environment and the news that we received. Then we'll get into the takeaways from the earning call from Virgin Galactic. And I'll wrap things up with the weekly performance review for the portfolio express in percentage gain or loss. With that said, let's get right into it. Inflation fears had dropped off the radar for a few weeks now, and that's primarily because money managers have finally accepted that the Feds has no intentions on raising rates. Um, and that's until actual, not projected, but actual inflation is here and is reflected in the data and sustained for a period of time. So why did the market go into a tailspin this week when the CPI number came in higher than anticipated? Well, that's because it reignited the debate around whether or not inflation will be real or transitory. And to be clear, one print isn't going to be enough to make that determination, but it does allow for speculation to run rampant and for articles to be printed and to get views in the media. So at a core of this, money managers are really trying to de determine whether or not they can keep plowing into those reopening plays or if it's time to you know, pump the brakes, take some chips off the table and reduce their exposure to, to those reopening plays. The one thing you got to remember is that the portfolio balance of a money manager who believes that inflation is real versus one who believes that this is all transitory as a result of supply chain issues as businesses are trying to ramp up and meet the demand, the growing demand from customers is going to be very different. Uh, and so you also got to remember that unlike you and I, a money manager is accountable to his clients or his or her clients. And they can't simply afford to sit idle and wait for the rotation to come back around into whatever sector they're concentrated in. So they have to continue to deliver gains for their customers, which is why they play that rotation game and jump from one sector to the other. But for a full context, you got to understand that tech and growth has been, or at least up until recently, has been outperforming every other sector, right? So there is an outflow now of liquidity out of tech and growth in order to help fund the diversification into other sectors that are going to benefit from the economy reopening. And so the final blow that came this week was when the CDC announced that they were lifting all mask, the mask mandates all over the place for vaccinated people. That was the signal that we are now truly indeed entering the post-COVID uh, economy. And at least through the summer and maybe into early fall, being into, into those reopening plays is truly the place to be. That's where you're going to make most of your gains. So what do I make of all this? To answer that, uh, let's me, let me zoom out a little bit, right? Let's 
Let's go out to the year-to-date chart for the SP500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. And so if you look on a year-to-date, the NASDAQ has gained 4.20%, the SP500 has gained 11.12%, and the Dow Jones has gained 12.34%. The one thing that I will bring your attention to here is that the Dow Jones didn't really start picking up speed or outperforming until March. Why is that? Well, that's when tech started selling off and the rotation went into, you know, into high gear, right? Because again, we have to grab liquidity from one side and move it to the other in order to fund that growth, right? Money just isn't just sitting uh, in accounts waiting to be spent. They have to grab it from somewhere to move it to uh, the, other, the other side. Now, if we go out a full year and look at, again, the three indices, so NASDAQ has gained 50.16%, the SP500 has gained 46.32%, and the Dow has gained 45.54%. Ultimately, tech and growth powers the future. That's why they're growth stocks, right? The world is still marching towards automation, still going digital. Uh, we're increasing our reliance on sustainable and renewable energy even more and space exploration is only going to speed up. And so the companies, in my opinion, that support that shift by far and large reside in the NASDAQ and will continue to outperform over the next five years. That said, there is such thing as market cycles, right? And that's what we're experiencing now. So a really near term, we'll we're gonna continue to see Neo, Virgin Galactic, ChargePoint, and Tesla struggle that's just the nature of the beast but this weakness that we're seeing right now isn't coming from business the business fundamentals uh, it's really more from the macro environment that we're in right and the, all the fears around inflation and what that means for those stocks and so in my opinion at the end of the day inflation is transitory and as a result of demand outpacing supply and it will subside as we get into the second part of the year here and so when you look at it that way, viewed through that lens, and you realize that a lot of those stocks that, you know, I like, so again, the Virgin Galactics of the world, the Teslas of the world, uh, NEO, uh, ChargePoint, and all of those, they're currently trading at near 50% discount or higher. And so really my only challenge at this point is to figure out how am I going to raise enough capital to take advantage of that buying opportunity? That's basically what it comes down to for me, right? And again, not financial advice, but that's really where my mind is at and that's the why behind it. And so that's a good segue, I think, into talking about Virgin Galactic and their earning call and what we found out uh, during, during that presentation. So let's switch to that. All right, so let's talk about Virgin Galactic. And at this point in time, they're a pre-revenue company. So things that I actually care about and what I'm listening for on these earning calls is twofold. Number one, it has to do with the critical path that they've laid out to reach a commercial state, as well as their cash burn. And so when we're thinking about that critical path, there are still four test flights that need to take place. The first one is going to be a rocket powered flight, and that's going to take the two test pilots into orbit. The second one will have the two pilots with a cabin full of mission specialists. The third one is going to be with Sir Richard Branson, and the idea there is to replicate what a true commercial flight would be like and the experience for the paying astronauts. The fourth one is going to be uh, to demonstrate their microgravity research program as well as the astronaut training program, and that's going to be in partnership with the Italian Air Force. The big gating item at the moment surrounds the first test flight, and so the EMI issues that up until now really have been causing the delay for Spaceship 2 have been addressed. And there's been a series of upgrades that they've gone through, as you can see on the screen here. So besides the macro environment punishing growth stocks in general, why does Virgin Galactic stock keep dropping? Well, it's first because investors are starting to lose patience due to the multiple delays. First, it was the AMI issue that is now addressed, but now literally minutes before they get onto the earning call, the Virgin Galactic uh, team dropped the news that they identified some more complications, but this time it was with their VMS Eve carrier plane. And so 
they are expecting in probably tomorrow or sometime next week to send a follow-up press release and at that point they'll detail whether or not this is going to cause further delay to their test program. But if you add to that the fact that Blue Origin, which is the Jeff Bezos space tourism company, is now has announced earlier in the week that they are going to be accepting deposits for spaceflight. And they're actually planning to take their first customer into space somewhere in July, All right? So the first mover, mover advantage that Virgin Galactic was supposed to benefit from is potentially going out the window here. So you put the micro environment plus the delays, plus you know more bad news around now VMS Eve, uh, potentially more bad news around that, and you have the current situation that we're in. The second item is the cash burn. Currently, they're running at a $60 million spend a month. If they continue on that trajectory, they can operate for the coming year. And that will allow them to expand their fleet. The good news here is that they should start bringing in more revenue in the second half of 2021. So realistically, if they keep on the current trajectory and they start commercial flight in early 2022, this becomes a non-issue. So at the end of the day, what do I make of all this? Well, if we look at the one year chart and these multiple delays and the macro environment have brought Virgin Galactic back to Earth, which in my opinion is a good thing. It's trading literally at the same price that I bought uh, my first shares a year ago. So we're back in that same range, that 14 to $16. So really again, my only concern at this point is whether or not the market will keep crying wolf around inflation long enough for me to raise enough capital to load up and get to my desired share count. So that's where I'm at. Uh, again, when I look at what they're doing, Virgin Galactic versus all the other stocks that I'm invested in, they are still performing, they're still hitting every single milestone and they're still growing. So there's truly no reason for me to panic. All right, so let's get into the weekly performance review by percentage gain or loss for the portfolio. And as much as last week was a great week and there was lots of great news, the portfolio reached brand new record highs, this week in contrast was very different. And the only thing that comes to mind when I think about what my chart looks like this week is this. <laughs> so let me bring it up and it's gonna make perfect sense. You're gonna see that it literally looks like that. So let me bring it up on the screen here. And walking through it, we kicked off the week uh, with a steady decline as the inflation fears mounted. And that was leading up to the CPI number that we released on Wednesday. When that took place, when we get the number, the selling intensified, right? And it was because it was much higher than anticipated. On Thursday, we got what should have been great news, and I, th I still think is great news for everybody else, including, well, me included, is that the CDC lifted the mandate to wear masks. So great for everybody, great for the, rota uh, the reopening plays, terrible for tech and growth. Because what that signals is the fact that now it truly is the economy reopening and being in those reopening plays is where you're going to make most of your gains in the near term. And so um, at that point, the selling went into overdrive in tech and growth. And that's that lowest low, low point that we're seeing on the chart here. And that was good for about negative 20%, somewhere around there for my portfolio losses on the week before everybody else realized that, you know, they kind of went overboard here. Um, and from there, it started recovering. People bought the dip in a major way and we came back to where we needed to be. The main benefit that I see here is the fact that, again, I was able to pick up some Virgin Galactic. I was able to pick up a little bit more uh, charge point. Uh, and if NEO stays pretty much where it is right now, I'll likely pick up a little bit of that uh, next week as well. Again, all things considered, not too terrible. All right, people, this will do it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content and found it insightful, please drop the video a like and share with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content. 
As a reminder, I post every Sunday and occasionally during the week. But that will do it for today. Again, as always, thank you for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.